This is Melissa Ford Locken. Rosalie Petrowski. Susan Seraph and Jess. Editors for the Washington Square Review. Washington Square On Air showcases the poetry and fiction of the latest edition of LCC's literary journal, The Washington Square Review, read by the poets, authors, and editors themselves. Expect the unexpected as our contributors express experience and fantasy with humor, imagination, poetic license, irony, and passion. If you love language at its most original, please join us in our audio town square to celebrate a community of writers spanning from around the world to Lansing. Lansing. This is Melissa Ford Locken, editor with the Washington Square Review. I'm here today with Kaylee Burr whose short fiction piece, Seeking Asylum, will be in our upcoming issue. Thanks for joining us today, Kaylee. Hi, thank you for having me. Sure thing. Tell us a little bit about your story. How did you come to write it? So the story that I have is Seeking Asylum, and it's a short story. It's like a psychological thriller with a little bit of romance, and it's a a historical fiction piece. And I wrote it for a class that I took during my second year of college and we would do a lot of workshop courses where we would just write short stories and then the whole class would get together and we would edit them and talk about them and I was in a class with a lot of students that were older than me so I felt kind of pressured to write something that would like maybe knock their socks off or something and I don't know why but I gravitated towards a little bit more of a psychological thriller which is unlike me because growing up I never read anything that was remotely like horror or thriller or anything. Um, But yeah, so I just wanted to try and write a piece that was a little bit different than my classmates and stuff. So I wrote about this girl who's in an insane asylum and we kind of figure out how she got there um, through some flashbacks. And then we hear about her present life in the insane asylum. And um, she talks about her roommate in the insane asylum and just kind of like flashes in between like back and forth, the present and the past of like her everyday life now and then her past life before. Yeah, the gradual series of reveals that takes place throughout the story is really compelling and eerie. It expands the story beyond just the setting of where the character is at the time, which is really cool. I know you're a student right now at Ohio State. So when you you mentioned that you wrote this for a workshop class, was that also at Ohio State? Yes. So I'm in the creative writing um, program at Ohio State in their English department, and we do a lot of creative workshop classes. I take, I've taken one pretty much every semester and we just go around and write a couple of flash pieces throughout the semester, typically one to two. Um, And these are small classes. So I haven't had more than maybe like 20 students. And then we all sit around and go over each other's work. It's been very impactful for me as a writer, especially because in high school and middle school, there were not a lot of like creative writing opportunities to do for like a grade. So this has been really fun to be able to get feedback on my work and kind of analyze it with others. Talk a little bit about the workshop process, because that can be really tricky to navigate, knowing when to incorporate feedback that you get and sometimes when to set it aside. Yeah, each of my professors have done it differently. I would say my favorite way that we've done it um, was this past semester with my nonfiction writing professor her name is Alyssa Washuda and how she did it is we would like a week or two before it was someone's turn to do their workshop they um, my professor would send out the story to the whole class and we would take notes on it we would annotate it mark it up and then we would have like a letter of feedback and the author would also have the option to write their questions that they have about the piece. Like, was it compelling? How did you feel about um, the sentence structure here? And just like any questions they wanted. So we would go into the workshop knowing kind of like what the author has in mind. But the thing that I liked that Alyssa did was she made it very clear that the author's intentions were like the biggest part of workshop because I remember in past workshops, people would suggest to me like changing one thing or another. And while they would be like great ideas, they didn't necessarily match my intentions for the piece. So I think really keeping the into- the author's intentions like in the center of conversation was something that was very key, especially because I'm primarily a fiction writer. And so transitioning into nonfiction a little bit this year is very vulnerable. So being able to like keep my, um, my intentions at the center of the conversation during workshop has been something that's helped me be a little more open with my class with my writing too. So 
I'm really interested. You know, you took a creative nonfiction class and you've written fiction before. What from your fiction experience traveled into the creative nonfiction experience? I would say my voice has changed. I try to make my characters very diverse, but I found it was very fun to play around with different voice with nonfiction because I was able to work with like, because I was talking um, in first person about myself and stuff. So the voice was a more personal, whereas with other characters, I would try and push like a certain narrative with their voice because um, I primarily write in first person. And so that was kind of relaxing to be able to use my own voice and kind of play around with readers and make it a lot more personal for everyone and stuff. So I think that's one thing that really transitioned over. And I really like to do vivid descriptions, which is something that I like to incorporate in my nonfiction writing as well, I would say. Did you feel when you were doing workshop with the other students that your fiction background gave a different perspective to the workshop table? Yeah, and sometimes I feel like it hurt me a little bit because it was very hard for me to separate the work from the author because in fiction we can talk about, oh, why did your character do this? Why did your character do that? But in nonfiction, you're talking about the author in most instances. So it really had to make me think about what the message of the piece was, what the author was trying to communicate because we weren't working with fictional characters. This was very real life. And it really helped me get to the root of like, the emotional impact of things and how what motivates people to do certain things. So that has also helped me again with my fiction writing to make it more realistic, like the emotions that drive people and their different thought processes. That's really interesting. With the creative nonfiction, did you do some research into uh, different styles or was that mostly taught in class? We did both. We studied a bunch of different like flash pieces for a few weeks leading like before we did the workshop. But then after that, it was kind of like free for all, like you wrote however you wanted to, like some people included like poetry in their pieces and some people used quotes. So I'm sure they would have to do a lot of research about different things like that. But because the piece I ended up writing was very like personal to my own life. So I didn't do that much research aside from like typical, like what is nonfiction creative writing? Cause I'm really had only written fiction. So um, just like besides the basics, I was able to just kind of figure my way around it. That's really interesting what you were saying about separating the, the character in, in fiction and separating out the narrator and the creative nonfiction. I think that's really fascinating to think about because the essays can be so much more personal and the writer is so much more exposed especially if they're writing about their own experience. When you're writing a story, you can tuck your own experience into the characters. So you can kind of hide it a little bit, but you really can't hide it in an essay. I've taken one other nonfiction class um, before during my freshman year of college, and I played it very safe with that. I remember I wrote a piece about colors and the type of emotions that colors make me feel because I was afraid to be too vulnerable with my class. But then this past semester, I was like, I need to... Um, I need to really immerse myself in this class and be vulnerable. And we would always joke that that class was kind of like a therapy session (laughs) because everyone is sharing such personal stories. But it was so nice to get to know everyone on a deeper level like that. And I did really enjoy the experience. I will probably take more nonfiction writing classes because of that. Yeah, the, the workshop experience can be very, very personal. I've heard poets say the same thing. But again, like we're saying, it's that the fiction is our stories about other people, not necessarily yeah. about us. You were mm-hmm. kind enough to send me some information about your background before we talked. And I can see you've done a lot of different kinds of volunteer work and academic work. Tell us a little bit about that and how that blends into your writing life. Yeah, so my favorite type of volunteer work that I like to do is I like to go back to the schools I grew up in, like my past elementary schools, middle school, high school, and volunteer there and work with students there. um, This past year, I worked at a different elementary school in my district, and I volunteered with fourth and fifth graders, and we did difficult areas of learning, specifically in reading and writing, because that's what my passion is more geared towards. But I also think that with working with children at that age group, their imagination is like so wild, but they're old enough to know how to like write down their thoughts and stuff and able to put it on paper and being able to work with these children and be able to help them communicate their own stories that they want to do really helps me um, with my writing now because I'm able to just understand like 
kind of where the passion grows and what motivates people in their reading and their writing, like um, what makes things interesting and what motivates people to want to keep reading onto the next line. So it's helped me a lot with in that aspect of my writing. And it's also just like filled me with a lot of love working with the children because they're so cute. And some of the things that they write about is just like the funniest stuff that I never would have thought on my own. So is there yeah. anything that you can remember that somebody wrote about? Yeah, there's around Thanksgiving. I remember there was this huge assignment that they had to do where they had to write a personal narrative from the perspective of a turkey um, for Thanksgiving. And so the kids came up with a lot of funny things about what these turkeys were doing. One of the turkeys was running away from a farmer's dog. Most of them actually ended up having their turkeys like escape and run free. Whereas I thought a lot of them were going to make the turkey end up being Thanksgiving dinner, but only I think like one or two students ended up doing that. So I thought that was really sweet that they took more of a positive route where I think now I probably would have taken more of a negative route just with my leaning towards thriller writing, but it was fun <laughs> to see where their minds went. Did any of these fictional turkeys talk? Yeah, they all talk. They talk with the other farm animals <laughs> or wood animals like wolves and deer and stuff if they escaped. It was really cute. That sounds pretty great. It would be fun mm -hmm. to read an anthology of those. Yeah, yeah, they were cute. <laughs> um, any other volunteer work that you do? And then one thing that I was wondering is how do you organize your volunteer work? Do you call and see if they're looking for volunteers? Because I know that's something a lot of times people are interested in doing and they just don't know how to get started. Yeah, I'm very fortunate that um, I'm still in contact um, with a lot of my previous teachers just because I have very good relationships with them. So for my old um, elementary school that I went to, I used to babysit for one of my teachers. So I would I texted her a couple years ago when I wanted to start volunteering there regularly. If I could come like once a week, if she needed any help and she was like, sure. So I'm very fortunate in that aspect. But I've also emailed teachers because most of my um, previous teachers have their emails open to the public. So I've asked about that. But then aside from my volunteer work within my school district, I'm in a scholars program at Ohio State where we do a lot of different volunteering. So that um, just kind of depends on like what my scholars program provides. We've done like boxing school lunches and stuff. We've done helping like organizing clothing for like huge clothing sales. We've done like different trick or treating events. There's a, a small committee in my scholars program that's dedicated to organizing different um, volunteer projects every every other week. So I one of my roommates was on that committee. So I was able to volunteer and do a lot of those um, events as well. And those are uh, local events for local the community. Yeah. Yes, they're all within like the Columbus area. Most of the time we would take a bus or walk or drive to whichever venue or place that we were going to volunteer at. That sounds awesome. That's great that the mm -hmm. school has a way to organize that and help you get out there and do good stuff. I also yeah. noticed that you had other jobs. You have a lot of, of jobs. <laughs> You've done a lot of things. And I'm sure that people that are listening to this right now are thinking, wow, I mean, that was already a lot. But you and I were talking um, before we officially began about your position with LIDS. And I was just thinking that might be a fun thing to talk about. Yeah. So it, I just started working there last fall because I wanted just a job to work. Just I'm a college student. I wanted a job because I was like, I need money for groceries and stuff. So my roommate had told me that she heard of this like Ohio state, like clothing apparel place. And she was like, yeah, I heard it was like pretty fun. I guess it was like a two minute walk from where I was living. So I was like, this would be so nice if I could just like walk around the block and go to work. And so I applied and um, it's for lids, which is like a huge hat company and they have different branch stores. And one of them is the Buckeye corner. And so I worked there all school year. Um, I'm not working there this summer, but maybe I'll work there again next school year. It was fun. We got like a bunch of really cool Ohio state apparel. I would always text my friends and send them pictures and be like, Oh my gosh, we got this new like shirt. It's so cute. And we would get really nice, like, workout sets and Nike clothes and stuff. And I really enjoyed that because game day at Ohio State is huge. So having access to, like, all the clothes there was very convenient for me and my friends. <laughs> that sounds like fun. It also makes me think you must meet a lot of different people. And then, I'm, of course, because we're writers, I'm back to the writing. And that makes me wonder, do you, what do you pull from the work experiences that feed into your writing? 
Yeah, honestly, I've pulled, I have met like so many people, especially because Ohio State has a good population of international students. So we get a lot of like international families that are coming to visit their children um, and stuff. And just meeting people from all over, not only the world, but also the US. We have a lot of people from the East Coast, and I know nothing about the East Coast. So like learning about culture in the East Coast has been kind of fun. Like, I don't know anything about it that much but like people will tell me about things they do at at home and I'm like that is so different from where I grew up like in Ohio so it's been cool to just meet all these new people working and working a retail job is a job where you really have to talk to a lot of the customers and it's very personal where I feel like sometimes in food service where I've what I've done previously I didn't talk to customers as much so this was a lot um more fun to get way to get to know people and everything when you were talking about different cultures and people from you know other places where you'd never been, is there anything that stands out in your mind of something someone told you that they did back home and you're like, oh my God, I've never done that? I remember one of my really good friends taught, he's from like Princeton, New Jersey, and we were having a conversation about how wild it was when he was growing up and learning um, about like the colonies and everything. It was all right, like in his backyard and he would like, drive down the road and know stuff that were like so historical whereas like for me I didn't have like any of that so we would go on field trips to go and see those places so like something like that is just like so different that they had such a different life to be able to have access to that much like history and knowledge I guess. Did you grow up in Columbus? Um, Most of my life I've lived in Columbus but before then I lived in Florida for a really long while most of my family lives um, in South Florida and then I have some family in Gainesville So we lived there for a while until my dad's um, work brought us to Columbus Elementary School is when I moved here. Do you have many memories of Florida, what it was like to live there? Yeah, my I love living in Florida. I love being close to my family, especially because I'm half Colombian. So the Spanish culture there is very strong. So it, it made me feel very at home. And there's so many things that I miss living there with my family. I do like where I love Um, where I live right now in Columbus, but I do miss the connection I had with my family in Florida. Like right now I'm watching Modern Family and I keep telling like (laughs) my partner when we see things with Gloria, I'm like, oh my gosh, that's just like my Thea or something. Like just like little memories and things that I miss of Spanish culture is something that I do wish I could still experience here. But I talk to my family a lot and we visit them and stuff. So I still get small bits and pieces of it. Very cool. You can always write it into a, a future essay or a yeah. story. Yeah. <laughs> so what school year wise, what's ahead ahead for you? It looks like you're going to graduate a year from now. So what, yes. do you, what do you hope to accomplish in the next year? Well, I'm going to be going into my third year of college, so my junior year, and I'm graduating, I think, a semester early. So this year I'm starting my senior thesis, which I think I'm going to write a novel for it. I need to talk to some of my professors and figure out exactly what we want to nail down. Originally, um, I wanted to write a fiction novel that I could have ready to be able to publish, but after my my semester writing nonfiction, I've been reevaluating everything and debating if I wanted to write a nonfiction, nonfiction novel or a bunch of a collection of stories. So this summer, I'm trying to like nail down my outline for my thesis and figure out what I want to do so I can start writing it for the next year. And then hopefully have it wrapped up and finished probably a year or a year and a half from now. That sounds wonderful. Is that your main project that you're working on now? Or do you have anything else? Yeah, that's pretty much what I'm working on now. I, for fun, I've been writing like this fiction novel for a couple of months now, but I think I might put the brakes on that because I want to try and push myself to write more nonfiction because I think that's been helping me a lot emotionally with discovering like different styles of writing. So I've been working a little bit on my fiction novel, but I've also been beginning my outline for a potential nonfiction piece. What's the novel that you're thinking you may have to set aside? What's that about? It's crazy. It's a concept that I thought of when I was in maybe early high school or middle school. And it's not thriller or anything, but I'm hoping to incorporate some of it. It's one of those very dynamic, I would say, fantasy novels that has like all these different elements. And you hopefully the dream I remember, like when I was little, you would open the first page and there'd be like a map and it would be like one of those types of fiction novels. So it was like 
it's like about that and it's a bunch of stuff. I won't go into all the crazy details because those types of books are very intricate, but it's something that I do hope to publish one day. That that's my ultimate dream is to publish that novel. That sounds great. Something that complicated would probably require a hundred percent of your creative energy while you were yeah. Yeah, involved in it. Mm-hmm. I think it's really great that taking the, the essay, the creative nonfiction class really inv- invigorated you and, and helped you think about things in different ways. As a writer, I think that's really important for all writers to be challenged in, in new ways. And a lot of times those challenges come from places that you don't expect. I think that's super cool. Mm-hmm. Well, thanks a lot for coming and joining us today. If people want to stay in touch with you and keep track of your writer's journey, where can they find you online? Yeah, thank you for having me. My um, Instagram is at Kaylee Burr, and I believe my Twitter is at Kaylee Bethany. Um, those are my public socials that you can find me on. Okay, we'll be sure to include those in the show notes. Thanks again for joining us today. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for listening to our talented poets and authors. Until next time, this has been Washington Square On Air. Where we showcase selections from Lansing Community College's literary journal, The Washington Square Review, a publication featuring writers from the Great Lakes State, across the nation, and around the world. To find out more about the Washington Square Review, visit lcc.edu slash WSR. We hope you enjoyed listening as much as we enjoyed sharing.